I'm Matt with Movie Web. It's a pleasure to uh, speak with both of you. Likewise, thank you. Yeah, it's it's a real pleasure. And first of all, um, my prayers and thoughts go out to Morocco and Moroccans. Um, I hope everyone you know is okay, and we you know we pray for safety over there. Um, getting to this film, uh, you guys tore me up. I wept uh, at the end of this. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> since I uh, was that touched. It's a very powerful. Uh, incredible film, honestly. So congratulations. Um, it, it's a heavy movie. Were you sort of prepared uh, emotionally um, for what this would become beforehand? And do you feel any weight lifted off your shoulders or any like relief after uh, directing this? Well, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's such a heavy subject matter that we experience really firsthand very close to us. And, and, and all these years that, that it was happening around us, we were all the time asking ourselves, why is this happening? How come that so many young people of our generation, some people that we knew when there be part of this monstrosity that is ISIS and, and, and the attacks in, in Europe and obviously all the war horrors that happened there, like, it's as, as if there, there were no words to express that. And that's why all these years, while we were writing the movie and prepping the movie, even though we were making, you know, like we're doing Bad Boys and we're doing Miss Marvel, it, it was like this, this, this ball in our stomach that we felt like it needs to get out. We need to express uh, uh, that story um, because it's our most personal and, and most important story that we have told. Anything uh, to add to that before I? Uh, no, yeah, it's exactly what Adil said. Is like for me, I come from a neighborhood where you know the highest percentage of young Muslims uh, from Belgium went to Syria, uh, actually from Europe. So it's 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 uh, it's to see that as as to see these guys that are like you, like exactly like Moroccan Belgian Muslims, to see them go over there and see see all that. See all the attacks that happened uh, in Belgium, France, um, around Europe. It's 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 just super uh, painful to see, and and we, we we just wanted to show the real story, and 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 that's why we did the research of like eight years, and and try to give this story that's that has all the complexities and the nuances, and and make it a real human story. Um, and, and we never really saw that as uh, in movies or TV shows where you have that Muslim perspective from the inside. And, and we felt that, yeah, we have to make this story, even though it felt really dangerous to make that story because we know these guys, uh, it's like you make a movie about the mafia. <laughs> and and so there were, I, I had a lot of doubts of making it. Uh, we could have made just, you know, keep making commercial fun movies but we felt like uh, this is, uh, you know, this is what we have to tell the world because it affected not only the Muslim community, but also the whole world. So it was a very important story to tell. Yeah. And um, as the film notes at the end, it, it's not over. It's it's a mess. The U.S. is kind of stealing resources. Assad is still sort of there. It's a, a terrible situation, but you really Get to the heart of the the humanity uh inside it uh, the human struggle um have you heard from anyone who's whose lives have been affected by uh the syrian civil war or assad or migration anything like that have you gotten a response from uh someone who was personally sort of affected yeah, sure. I mean, there, there's a scene with uh, with parents of people that went there, and that scene is actually not a fiction scene. It's, it's like a documentary. So those parents are real parents that really lost their sons that went to Syria, and and uh, and they were not acting. They were really like giving the testimonials. So with, obviously, when they saw the movie, it was very personal for them because they recognized the experiences that their their sons had in in in, in Syria and ISIS. But also a lot of people that were part of the movie, uh, especially in the scenes in Syria, they were really refugees. There were people that fled. Everybody had a story, basically. People that fled Syria and the mosque, either because of Assad or ISIS. People that fled Mosul, uh, Iraq, because of ISIS. So there were 
people that really had that first-hand experience and now the movie is being shown uh, the recently it was shown in beirut in a in a in a refugee camp of all syrian uh syrian people syrian uh, uh, young girls that you know when they saw those scenes they experienced that they fled the bombardment they fled isis when it came to their city and they there it was powerful but they really appreciated how authentic and real uh that the, the way that we portray those scenes and they say that's it's really the truth yeah that's that's incredible um and Bilal and both of you uh what i found really interesting one aspect uh more intellectually was this uh notion of propaganda and filmmaking and how isis does it but really i mean the u.s did it uh germany did it the soviets um and there's this exchange where uh she says uh you're filming atrocities and he says i'm just trying to survive uh like you what interested you about including that sort of section and that perspective of it uh and and the idea of propaganda yeah, but well, you can ask. Yeah, well, <laughs> well it, it, it's because it's the first terrorist organization that used propaganda on that level, mm -hmm. and and it's it's also the first terror organization that used social media uh, to recruit as much young people over the world as as much as possible. So they were very savvy in using all the Hollywood technique and video game techniques, and propaganda was really a weapon for them. The same way that the Nazis had propaganda as a weapon for for their recruitment, and. Um, and, and it's it's crazy as we were researching that we saw that, you know, they really used all the elements, all the techniques that we are using in our movies. So they had a crew, they had, a, they had you know, tracks and steady cams and it was rehearsed and, and, you know, they had location scouting. So it was really very crazy to see that the things that we do, you know, very clinical and, and you know, basically psychopathic because they're going to murder people, but they were, you know, on a high level of, 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 technicity and and and, and crafts and they use all those crafts for 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 you know, terrorist attacks and terrorist um, uh, actions in their movies and and we never saw that before in history that i mean on the terrorist group front you know usually before they would film but it was always like very improvised but these were it was not improvised it was methodical cold and they just reached so many young people all over the world by making those hollywood like productions and and even you know video game like things you know they would put cool pros on their ak-47 which really mimicked like the call of duty video games and that's how they recruited so many people in especially in western europe because it's a it's the western youth knows what hollywood movies are and that permitted them you know that connection and anything to add to that Milo? Uh, i was uh, exactly what he said <laughs> <laughs> fascinating how they uh and and we never saw that um you know that aspect yeah I mean, but we, we watched uh, you, we watched all those yeah videos. we saw we saw all the isis videos and analyzed it and and it's crazy how how yeah what what level of technical uh, abilities they had to tell you know to attract all these young people kind of a more abstract question but what do you think is the difference between propaganda and cinema well, that's, that's that's like an exploration that we like to do in, in this movie and maybe also in our future project. But it's like it's, it's like this fine line where as you're making cinema, you're not doing a crime, I would say. You know, you're, you're really doing art. You're trying to, to, uh, to entertain people, to tell a story, to reach people on an emotional level. And that's the interesting thing, how that cinema is can be used or filmmaking techniques can be used for crime for terrorism for something evil and and i see that as a as an allegory of of religion basically how religion you know can be good because we're muslim and we're religious and and we believe in in, in the power and the love that islam can spread and the peace uh, the peaceful aspect of it but it can be misused to do horrible thing and abuse to do horrible thing and that's exactly how you know our tribe is the muslim tribe but our tribe is also the filmmaking tribe and that's how they perverted all those filmmaking aspects so that's what i want to try to do, make a parallel between those two things that's fascinating that yeah i love that i also really enjoyed the music throughout it's a bold choice i love the first musical sequence uh it's got this clever visual foreshadowing but it also suggests like a bit of guilt on his part he's clubbing and having a good time but he can't stop thinking of what's going on 
uh, in Syria. And you have these gorgeous sung intertitles and the epilogue. Why was it so crucial for you uh, to have these sort of this musicality throughout the film for both of you? Yeah, music was, um, but it reaches people on another level. It's sometimes it's it's really certainly if you talk about the Syrian conflict and the emotions that are there and the pain, it's sometimes really difficult to, you know, make a translation in a film scene. So by making music, it, it, it really allows you to go on another level and understand uh, something that's, you know, it's unexplainable. And and uh, and that's the same thing with pop poetry, and and because Isis really, you know, uh, you know, did uh, uh, rejected music and rejected female singing and and instruments, we felt like well, well, the best way to do an anti Isis movie is to make it a musical and 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 really show what our culture is is filled with music and poetry and wisdom and knowledge, and Isis is against all of that, so. That's why we, we felt like that's the way to 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 go and 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 you know go inside the mind of our characters and and and, and make the people feel what what uh what they are going through. Uh, anything to add, Adil? Yeah, I think you know also you know Arabian Nights, uh, Thousand and One Nights. That's that's something very uh, it's 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 Arab uh, fairy tales and 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 we just love that and we were also trying okay how can we. Like try to tell a modern Arab fairy tale story, you would say, and then I think that with our Sher Azad, that you know tells a story with with that vibe. It's it's really like from the from the very old tradition of uh, of Arabic storytelling. So it felt appropriate to tell that kind of story. Hmm. Interesting. I uh, was curious about the timeline. I think I have it right, but you released you went to Khan with this before Bad Girl was canceled and that fiasco, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And does making something like this that's so personal and powerful, uh, combined with the issues you know you've obviously had with uh, Batgirl, be the Beverly Hills Cop film, um, has that sort of made you want to avoid like big budget studio filmmaking uh, a little bit, or are you undeterred completely? No, I think I think you know for us. We we are lucky that that we are allowed now to do to do Bad Boys Four with with Jerry um, and and you know I mean it was a tough decision you know to do Bad Girl we we, we lost mm -hmm. uh, basically basically we were doing Beverly Hills Cop Four but then again Bad Girl and we could not do both so we lost Beverly Hills Cop you know, in order to do Bad Girl because every project that we do is very passionate you know and uh, and and even though it's a big commercial movie or it's a, it's a big studio movie we always we always go all the way uh, uh, do you still hear me or yeah, so so we always go away. every any project is is passionate for for us. Bad girl, we we invested a lot of time, a lot of effort in it. So you become emotionally invested in it, no matter what what the project is. But obviously, you know, one one project in Europe will have way less compromise than a big big budget thing in the United States. In Europe, we are allowed mm -hmm. basically to to go crazy and to take risk. Whereas automatically in Hollywood, you got to be a little bit more careful with that um, but it's good to have the balance i would say because we learned a lot from our experience doing bad boys so you know the jerry Bruckheimer school of action and mm -hmm. big set pieces helped us out, out for for rebel same thing with miss marvel you know working in a big mcu marvel machine those allowed us to be more confident in, in directing those kind of sequences in the, in the movie yeah, the, the action sequences are fantastic. Uh, kind of reminded me of Black Hawk Down in some places or some of the more tense hurt. I mean, it, very good. Um, and talking to both of you, it's amazing how like uh, optimistic you seem and really just passionate about your work after a setback like the Batgirl thing, uh, which bummed a lot of us out. If there's... If the film is never seen, is there one thing you want the world to know about what you did there, um, about what you accomplished? Well, the thing is that, but obviously we, we never got, you know, we never had our day in court, you would say, you know, we never get to make our case because we never finished the movie. I think a producer even told us that the first test screening was not even a real test screening. That's the day we heard it later. Our producer told, no, it was just like a private kind of screening thing. So, so you were really at the, at the beginning of, you know, figuring out the editing of the movie, but 
You know, Leslie Grace gave a great performance. She was a great Barbara Gordon, great bad girl. She she fueled the character with a lot of humanity and vulnerability and 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 also a lot of strength. And it was really like an aspiring character to look up to. And obviously Michael Keaton, great Batman as always, you know, iconic. Brendan gave at that time already an Oscar worthy performance. J.J. <laughs> Simmons, fantastic guy. So I would say that what we tried to do it was it was like we grew up with the Burton movies and 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 also with the Batman animated uh, uh, TV show and we tried to you know to have that vibe that was what we we tried to do the, the animated TV show and and the Burton movies and a little bit of the Christopher Nolan you know because the movie was a bit more grounded you know it was it was not as fantasy like uh, it was it was Gotham City in the winter and um, I think that it would have been a, a nice vibe. I mean, it's, it's the biggest disappointment of our career that we yes. couldn't show it to an audience because the fandom and the DC fandom, they are boss, you know, and the audience is our boss and they should be the people that actually judge a movie if it's good, bad, if you go to see it or not. So, yeah. Okay. Just, uh, just still have a little hope that one day, you know, bad girl will see the light, you know, yeah. and then we will, you know, see a, that character uh, on big screen. Yeah, but it was, a, you know, on the positive note, it was a big honor and privilege just as fans of DC and Batman to to be allowed to to go there in that world and and, and to get to know these people and uh, to have these people as friends. Amazing. I, and the references you touch on there, uh, your previous work, um, the Belgian films, uh, Rebel, there's so much variety there. What are you drawn to in a project? It doesn't seem like a genre. It doesn't seem like it's specifically uh, one thing. What what sort of uh, hooks you? Well, it's it's the humanity of the characters, I would say, and the kinetic aspect of it. The energy, the kinetic aspect. You know, you put you put the characters in in trouble, <laughs> and they need to fucking fix it. You know, so that's. That's the kind of thing, and I would say, even though the story and the genre might be very different, you know, Rebel was the, the culmination of directorial capacities, our most personal movie. And and in that vein, <laughs> Bad Girl was just, you know, in another world, in another thing, but it was still very close to the characters, very human and, and you know, yeah. very kinetic. So, so that that is what it would have been, you know? Perfect. Well, I don't want to take up more of your time. Uh, we missed you at Con, but I hope we see you at the Oscars because I think this uh, it's worthy. It's uh, such a powerful film. Congrats. Thank, thank, you, thank you so, so much. much. God willing. God willing. Yes. Yes. Thank, <laughs> you. thank you. Have a great week, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.